welcome back to HS Connect's uh, Mental Health Awareness Series. Um, before we get started and I introduce our guests, I just want to make sure that um, you guys are aware that this interview and this series are not meant to replace counseling, therapy, or psychological services. Um, neither this interview nor any information contained within it substitute for professional help or care by a medical professional. Um, if you need to talk to someone, please reach out to the HS Connect uh, resources that we have on our website and they'll be at the bottom of this post as well. And with that being said, I just want to thank and introduce our guest, Vancouver-based artist and art therapist, Erica. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes. So before, uh, just like a background for um, how we, I kind of was aware of you was uh, you have a very colorful and very inspirational Instagram account, a wonderful YouTube channel, which I've shared with the group as well. And I was just following you, just inspired by your uh, approach and your um, message about our therapy. And so I thought that our um, community would benefit from getting to know a little bit more about um, you, about your practice and art therapy in general. So uh, I guess my first uh, question really is, can you explain or tell our audience a little bit about you know, your relationship with art and how you kind of incorporated art therapy into that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so for me, like I've always been a lifelong artist, like since I was really, really young, I've always was drawing and all that stuff. And, and the reason why is because I was really, really shy kid. And I'm still shy and I use, I've always used art as a way of expressing myself, expressing my emotions and communicating. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I always knew I wanted to be an artist because that's how I used art. And so I had a goal. I was like, I'm going to go to art school. I'm going to become a painter. Yeah. And it happened. I got into like my dream school yeah. in Vancouver, which is the Emily Carr University. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up having a really really hard time in art school oh, because wow. because I was so shy and I was young and you know I believed everything that all of my professors told me mm -hmm. I didn't do really well in art school at all you know I didn't get good grades or anything like that oh. and I think I was just I just wasn't in the right mindset because I was using art as a way to express myself but in art school they teach you ways to you know be a better artist and I wasn't really interested in that I was just interested in in deeper expression mm -hmm. and so in my fourth year um in majoring in painting my painting professor actually told me he's like I don't think painting is for you mm -hmm. and like I don't even know like what else he said but like those words hearing yeah. that from like a professional artist from my professor I was like wow like maybe maybe I shouldn't do any art anymore you know it just completely broke me hearing that and I remember I went home that day I was crying and I was like I I'm never going to paint again I'm, I'm just not going to do it because I'm not good at it yeah, yeah. and so I ended up packing away all of my art supplies for like yeah. two years I so I stopped making art for two years when I had done it my whole entire life yeah and in those two years you know I did a lot of self-discovery I I did what like any early 20 year old would do. I went traveling mm -hmm. and um, I was just trying to find myself and I actually ended up getting into a lot of yoga and meditation. And when I found that path, when I started connecting with myself, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, oh, like maybe I should start drawing and painting again, you know, like maybe I should try this. And so I, mm -hmm. I remember I picked up a piece of paper and a set of watercolors. I was in Hawaii at this point. Mm. And I started painting these pictures and it was the first time in two years that I painted. And it was the first time that I let myself create mm -hmm. like purely from my heart. You know, I didn't care what anybody said. I don't care what it looked like. I just know that it felt really good in my soul just mm -hmm. to paint something. So I ended up painting something and that led me to selling my first painting which is crazy because <laughs> that wasn't even my intention, right? Mm -hmm. And then so I started combining the meditation and painting together. And I came back to Vancouver and I was telling my friend, I was like, I want to teach like a painting meditation workshop. And then he was like, have you ever heard of art therapy? 
I was like, mm. no, like, what is that? I've never even heard of the term. Mm. So I went home and I Googled art therapy and then I found a school in Vancouver and I applied that day. And it was literally something that had found me. And I realized like that, that was my path. My path is not to become a professional artist. My path is to spread my passion for expressive arts and art therapy. Mm. Cause I, I just don't think anyone should tell you that you can or cannot paint you know what I mean or you can or cannot draw like everyone has the right to do whatever they want like there there's no wrong way to express yourself I think yes I mean I can't imagine just being told you know something that you've envisioned and a big part of your identity that you know um perhaps a different you know path uh that's like a a big uh a big thing to like deal with but also it sort of points to something, a comment that I get a lot um, about, you know, what if I'm not good at art? Should I do art therapy? Or what if, you know, I've never, I've never thought of myself as an artist, you know, uh, you know, is it actually something for me? Um, and that kind of, you know, that kind of echoes that. Can you kind of explain? Because I think that's one of the biggest con- misconceptions is that yes. you kind of have to love art or be an artist in order to um, engage in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is definitely one of the the biggest misconceptions about art therapy um, Mm -hmm. is that you think you have to be good at art or have experience with art to to benefit from art therapy. And that's not true at all. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you that anyone can benefit from art therapy. It doesn't matter if you have experience or no experience. It's not about being good at art and developing technical skills to be an artist in an art therapy session. It's very, very different than an art class. Mm -hmm. In an art class, maybe a teacher will teach you how to sketch something, how to draw something, how to paint a sunset. But in an art therapy session, it's not like that at at all. It's not Mm -hmm. about the end product of what it looks like. It's more so about the process of creating the art and what kind of feelings come up and what kind of things come up for you during the process versus what it actually looks like. Yes. Yeah, and I, and I think that's also, so it's not so much on the product that you're making, but the, yeah. the actions and what what's kind of feelings you have while you're doing the, uh, making that product, basically. Yeah, yeah, and also, you know, if you work with an art therapist, the art therapist can help you find the right materials to help you express yourself, right? So mm-hmm. um, let's say someone who's never picked up a paintbrush before or something, maybe the art therapist will suggest another material that's a bit easier to help you express yourself. So each material has a different purpose. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, you don't have to know how to, you know, do those things. The art therapist will help guide you for sure. So with, with that, like in, in mind, can you kind of explain a little bit or like, what would a art therapy session kind of look like, especially in this, you know, one of the things that I noticed on your website as well is that you have the ability to do Zoom sessions, which I think, you know, yeah. is kind of a silver lining of the challenging times we're in, if, if you want to look at it that way. And, you know, that I think is um, something that, you know, before I think a lot of people thought, okay, I have to go to like an art studio or I have to do, but, you know, a lot of your videos and even what you've shared on your social media, um, some of these activities can be done done at home and, and in a virtual way too. So can you explain kind of what that looks like with your um, practice? Yeah. So, I mean, I never envisioned my practice heading this way because obviously before COVID, I was seeing all my clients in person and then COVID hit and I was like, okay, like, what can I do? (laughs) And so now I have the opportunity to work with people all over the world, which is amazing. And yeah, you don't need, you don't need a whole art studio, you know, like a lot of the um, exercises that we do, like you just need a pencil and some pencil crayons and a piece of paper. Like that's literally all you need you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on art supplies and all you need is just a quiet space a desk and that's it it's really really simple and is there like um so one of the things that we got some questions on is about um you know is this something that i could do with my with my kid or can this be like a family exercise Uh, especially with a lot of our um younger uh, kids, kiddos who have HS, um, mm-hmm. I think that, you know, talking about a condition that can be very, uh, I mean, it's physically painful, but emotionally as well. Um, is there any room for that? And, you know, is it, is it, is there a time when you're too young to kind of engage in this? Um, what's your experience like with that? 
Um, I don't think there's an age that is too young to experience this, but I definitely think art therapy is something that can be done together in, yeah, within a family, within partnership, you know, there's all these different types of dynamics. And I've definitely found that when I'm running like an art therapy group, it's actually a lot more um, beneficial for everyone because everyone has the opportunity to share and see each other's artwork. And also you get to know someone on a much deeper level just by seeing their art. You don't have to talk to them, you know, but when you see their art, it's just a different way to get to know someone. And I think that's so special. Like I've had clients that are nonverbal and I feel like I know them so well because we've had this relationship of art making together. And I think it's, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. You don't need words to, yeah, communicate. Well, that's a really great point that, you know, um, even if you are like, you know, shy or you have, uh, maybe you don't really want to make your condition the focus because let's be honest, like a lot of us HS folks think about HS a lot and it impacts our life a lot. So it's mm-hmm. nice to kind of be able to share, um, you know, what we're painting or what we're drawing. And uh, no, that's a really great point, you know, that if there's something else that can be the focus of our expression, it's not always that. Um, and then with that also in mind, um, you know, some of the HS community does like to um, engage in art and share that. Um, and then one of the questions that sometimes comes up is, you know, what if it's a, uh, the, the painting is dark or it, it's, it's not, you know, a pleasant um, drawing? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, on, on that? And should that even be something that should discourage people from, from sharing or doing it? Right. Well, that's something that shouldn't discourage people from trying art therapy. Um, As I said earlier, you know, art therapy is not about making a pretty picture at all. Like the art that is created in the art therapy session is so different than a art class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes a lot of uncomfortable things come up during the session that you maybe you didn't even know you had inside of you. Mm -hmm. And looking at the piece can can bring up a lot of feelings as well. And I and I think that's okay you know mm-hmm. working with a actual art therapist to help you process that is probably the safe way safe, safest way to do that mm-hmm. um but yeah there's been many times even in my own process where I'm doing art and I'm like oh this is like really dark this is making me feel really uncomfortable like I don't want to look at it you know and yeah. and I think that's where the gift is it's like I didn't even know I was feeling that way I didn't know I had that inside of me Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, you know, it could be so dark and seeing that face to face can be a really powerful reflection for you. Yes, no, exactly. Yes, that's very true. And so I think that one of the other um, kind of HS unique kind of experiences here is that, uh, yeah, a little bit about um, what they're sharing. And then also, you know, a lot of us deal with a lot of chronic pain and um, maybe don't, you know, don't go out as much. And, you know, again, with the Zoom, I think that's one of the things that I thought was so cool in some ways, because, you know, for some people who are uh, staying at home, especially during this time as well, um, but from really just seeing some of your YouTube videos as well, you know, it's not necessarily uh, something that has to be super physically demanding, you know, especially if you have, uh, you know, you're experiencing pain or you're having an off day. It can be something that um, you know you can be gentle with. Is that um, do I have that kind of correct there? Yeah, definitely. You know, I've worked with people who've had severe physical disabilities, and somehow we always found a way to make it work. And that's the job as a of the art therapist as well is to find ways to adapt to each client and whatever kind of disability that they have, you know, whether maybe physical or mental, and provide a directive that is easier for them. To that, yeah. And, so, mm-hmm. and I guess the the big umbrella question I should really ask is is, um, you know, how is art therapy, um, you know, like how would you define it or think about it, and you know, how would that you know, what are sort of the ways it's a little bit different than engaging, you know, a counselor or or like what we think Mm -hmm. of regular therapy? Right. Well, I think art therapy, it's it's a combination of both. So it's a combination of um, talk therapy Mm -hmm. and and art making. So in a session, each session can look so different. You Mm -hmm. know, some sessions, maybe there's no talking at all. Some sessions, maybe it's just um, all talking or maybe it's half, half art 
talking oh, okay. and art making. So it really depends on what the client is feeling that day. But um, yeah, so it's a mixture of both. And it's really about focusing on the creative process. And it's just opening another avenue of communication for people. You know, there's a lot of things that we go through and we don't have the words for it. We don't have the words to describe how we're feeling, mm -hmm. you know, what we're going through. So it's about using the art materials as, as a tool, as your friend to help you express that out of yourself. Yes. Oh, and I didn't really, okay. So, so if you, you know, you engage in th art therapy, it's not always, you know, some days you don't have to necessarily do the actual project. You can just talk and, you know, yeah. Oh, okay. it's very it's very open and it just kind of depends well that's my approach it's very mm -hmm. like intuitive and it's it's about how the client is feeling in that moment and in that day and from my experience there's some days that it's all talking or maybe it's all art making and no talking so yeah it, it yeah. really varies and also you know it's not always about me giving my client a a directive to do sometimes mm -hmm. maybe it's more open it's like what do you feel like doing today and then they can have kind of an open studio approach versus me giving them directions on what to do mm -hmm. and i also noticed um you actually have these really awesome you know like one of one of your videos that i like on youtube that i go to often is you have this <laughs> exercise to kind of check in with yourself and, you know, and I, you guys should definitely check out her YouTube videos because they're, I mean, you've just put so much thought into them. They're just beautiful to look at. The music's like soothing. Um, you know, it's just, it's just such a like wonderful resource. So, you know, and I'll, I'll be linking her YouTube channel and everything down on this post as well. Um, you know, but you have a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, you know, it's very kind of bite-sized, I guess, but like kind of looking at, um, you know, anxiety, uh, dealing with uh, just the level of stress that you're having, kind of checking in with yourself. Um, and so, and one of the things that a lot of us, um, you know, is very common in HS community is there's a lot of anxiety either about um, procedures we're about to go under, the progression mm -hmm. of, the, of the condition. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's hard to tell, you know, if you're getting a little, a little depressed or if it's anxiety. Um, is there um, any examples that you have of, you know, how we deal with that in sort of an art therapy setting, like to manage anxiety or kind of overcome um, a, a time in your life where you're really anxious? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different examples, but I just released a video today, actually. It's, um, it's an art exercise for stress relief. And it's, it's one of my favorite exercises because it's so easy to do. As you said, it's very bite-sized. It can take like 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. Oh, awesome. um, and basically yeah. what you do is you have a piece of paper and then you have a pencil or a pencil crayon and you start to draw out your stress. So if you were to imagine what does stress look like in your body, you know, maybe you're imagining feeling it in your shoulders, like what does that look like? What shape is it? What kind of color is it? What kind of marks would it make? What are the lines like? And yeah. you start to just scribble that onto the paper. And then maybe you start to add some words of maybe what you're feeling stressed about. Maybe it's yeah. your health, your finances, whatever, you write that out and you just let this piece of paper contain all of that stress that's in your body and in your mind so you can go over it and layer it over as many times as you want I really like to hold my pen like this and just start scratching I find that's like really cathartic for me you know it's like that tight tension yeah and afterwards when your page is filled with all those marks and things what you do is you scrunch it up like a stress ball, you know, those stress balls that we just keep squeezing and you just yeah. keep squeezing that and you keep releasing it and eventually it gets softer and you rip it up and you're literally transforming some heavy feeling into your body into lightness. Yeah. And I think that's the most powerful part about art therapy is that it has the ability to transform emotions. Yes. And then you're also creating, you know, art at the same time. It actually reminds me, do you mind if I share a story, Ashley? Yeah, sure. So there's this, it, it's one of my favorite um, art therapy stories. So I was working with a girl who was dealing with a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And when she came into my office, she was going like this with her hands, you know, mm -hmm. and you can tell that she was feeling a lot of stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, clay is really good for that because, you know, uh -huh. you get to like mold clay. Yeah. 
<laughs> I gave her a lump of clay and she starts, you know, squeezing it. And I could feel that she had something to let go of and she wouldn't, she wasn't able to talk about it. Right. So mm -hmm. I was like, how do you feel about taking some clay and just throwing it on the wall? Just, you know, just release that energy out of you. And so she takes this ball of clay, she throws it on the wall. And I was like, do you want to do this again? And she ends up doing it for like half an hour. <laughs> and in the end, the wall was filled with this beautiful clay painting. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like pieces of wall on the clay, but it was, it was beautiful. And you can feel mm -hmm. the energy in that. And that was an example of how that anxiety was transformed into something else. Yeah. No, and you know, I think that's so like, you know, with the stress activity, like, because how many times do we just say, like, well, I'm just so stressed out? <laughs> you right. Know? It's, it's like normal for us, right? Yeah. And, you know, we don't really give, um, like, we never really stop and just say, like, what does that look like? And we kind of ask ourselves, mm -hmm. um, you know, what it's just kind of a weight that we carry, you know, and even, um, but, I mean, I do that thing with my hands. <laughs> like, maybe I, should do. I do too. You know, it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's also, um, like kind of, I love that story because it's that you weren't really, you know, you're kind of meeting her where she's at with, with the therapy, you know, and it's not that like she's doing this task to, which I think it's sometimes, you know, for people who have engaged, it can feel, um, with just kind of normal therapy. It's like you have an assignment and you have to, you know, do that. But I think this is more, um, you know, let's do whatever your body's currently going through. Let's find a way yeah. to transform. So I exactly. think that's awesome, you know, and something I wish what people in the HS community could, you know, experience more because, you know, our uh, physical state is something that we often have on our minds um, yeah. a lot, <laughs> you know, and I think that um, a lot of times when we do try to do anything that is for mental health, it can be, it can feel a little, uh, you know, just kind of traditional medicine and kind of a little robotic sometimes. So I think that's a really great example that like you can just take all of the weight of what going through this condition is and transform it into something that you can see and express that's not about, you know, I'm, I'm a 10 out of 10 in pain today, <laughs> you know, which is usually, you know, the way we, we've been um, kind of the, the, so you're working with like a scale kind of of like yeah you know like they'll be like oh how's your pain and you're like oh mm -hmm. I'm a ten <laughs> you know but right it, that's just like there's just so much more to it than than that you know and that was kind of my goal with with bringing you on and sort of showing your world to the HS community because I think that that just doesn't capture like everything that pain and stress and anxiety are you know they're such complicated like layered things. And so um, that's, that's wonderful. Cause uh, yeah, I definitely, <laughs> I mean, you know, and I think that it was your expertise too, you know, like having a therapist to kind of guide you into um, an activity that wouldn't be frustrating, but would actually be um, that would kind of connect for you is I think the most important. I see your role in that really well. Mm. So um, yeah, that's like, that's awesome. And I think one <laughs> other um Thing that I really want to kind of point out that you do. Um, so I'm trying to kind of uh, engage a little bit more with this community, but um, for our HS members who are um, planning on becoming pregnant or mm -hmm. um, uh, starting a family, um, that's a very, you know, I, I, you know, I don't have children myself, but I know it's a very stressful, you know, just plan, especially during a pandemic, it can be very stressful to kind of think about um, pregnancy, but also because of the condition, like layering HS on top of that makes just the regular pregnancy process stressful. Um, so, and I saw that you had uh, this uh, belly art on your, on your website. And I was just kind of curious as to that, because, you know, we have, um, one of the things that I really liked about it was that I kind of felt like it was empowering just kind of what your body was going through. Mm -hmm. um, and so what, what is uh, sort of what does that kind of look like and um, any stories about uh, the belly art section? Because I think that's just really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's, it's definitely worth 
celebrating being pregnant. I think like life is a miracle and we don't really stop and think like, wow, like it's actually a miracle to give birth and be pregnant and be alive. And so mm-hmm. I really believe that art should be on things other than canvas. And so I was, yeah. I, I just asked my friend one day, I was like, can I paint your belly? And I kind of started from there. And the, the cool thing is, is that when I'm painting the belly, it's like, I always feel them moving they're always kind of like moving with me in a way and mm-hmm. every single time I've done it I don't, I don't know why or how but it's so cool to see you know to see them moving with you along with my paintbrush on it yeah. and I've done it for some of my close friends and like the colors that I've chose for them and everything is like mm-hmm. just always very connected to who they are like when they're born I'm like wow it makes sense I was like somehow intuitively connecting to to the baby through mm-hmm. art I don't know how to explain it, but no, it's... that's like no, and I think that's just like so. Um, it was just so unique, and like you know, I, I I think that. I mean, maybe in some ways too, it could be something that you know. There's other ways to engage in in therapy when you're going through this particular experience. So I think that that was really um, awesome, and it can be stressful for our community as well. Um, And I guess um, with also being mindful of your time, I guess I kind of want to um, ask you kind of a last uh, question here, which is um, for people who are are watching this and, Mm -hmm. you know, what are like some of the the signs or or things you kind of should be on a lookout for that like, hey, maybe maybe our therapy may be helpful, you know, like, is it, you know, like I think your example with the with the hands was something that was like really like really spot on because like you know there was like it, you know is it like oh I, I'm feeling a little withdrawn or I'm feeling you know more irritable than usual or like what are sort of the things that you could you know maybe um, look for to to kind of nudge you towards art therapy? Right. I think if you're feeling um, stuck, you know, if you're feeling like you're not being your fully expressed self through just talking through whatever it may be. If you're feeling like there's something more that needs to come out of you. Like I I believe that everyone has a story to tell whatever in whatever form it may be. Maybe it's dance, maybe it's music or art or whatever, but everybody has something that they need to share. And like we, we were born to create, you know, it's like when we look at kids, they, they love drawing, give them crayons and they will go for it. Yeah. But then if you give it to an adult, they're like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm really bad at drawing. I don't know if I should do that. You know, and I don't, I think we need to let go of that story and know that art making is not just for artists. It's actually really good for our mental health or emotional wealth, um, health, mm-hmm. you know, everything. And so if you're feeling like stuck, if you're feeling maybe a low energy, if you're feeling like you just need another way of expression then I think art therapy is for you but I also think that art therapy is for everyone and everyone should just try it at least once you know yeah and just let yourself let yourself go there I think it's the inner critic voice that that makes a lot of people not want to try it yes and that's stuck oh yeah I I've I've said that to myself I've heard that so much <laughs> you know because you just kind of feel um especially like with the with since you know we were we have so many appointments and so many, we can often have a lot of like setbacks in the condition, you know, okay. and it can be, you can kind of feel like you're just stuck with this condition and it's not getting better. Um, and in some ways, like, I think that's one of the most direct ways where, you know, we kind of feel uh, stuck in that way. But I, and for me, I mean, I don't know if it helps the audience to know, but I had like a little bit of an introduction to art therapy from school and mm. um you know, I, it was sort of uh, surprising to me how it's not so well integrated into like the care that people receive in, in the medical community. You know, I just, right. you know, why isn't this something that we share, especially with uh, chronic conditions like this, where it kind of follows you for a lifetime, you know, like mm-hmm. there's no, there's not a lot of avenues to kind of think outside of the box so in terms of how you're feeling and how you progress. So, um And feeling stuck is definitely, I feel like it's one of the HS feelings. Yeah, Um, you know, it's just, it's just another form of self-care. And the more self-care that we do for ourselves, the better. So, yeah, yeah. especially during this time. So I think that 
Mm -hmm. you, know, you did like an amazing job just sort of explaining and giving an introduction to this because um, you know, I know there's a lot of people who are very curious about it. Um, we're really thankful. And I also have, um, again, I'm going to plug her YouTube videos. <laughs> I've been sending it everywhere. Um, oh, thank I'll, you. Be, I'll be sharing that. Um, we shared your website and they'll be all at the bottom of this, of the um, uh, interview as well, so that they can reach you. Um, again, even though you're Vancouver based, you know, you are doing Zoom sessions. So please mm -hmm. like, check that out. Because I think that that's also just, um, you know, just a really cool um, thing that came out of uh, social distancing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I, I, I never sort of thought of before. So um, yeah, we really appreciate your time. Thank you for taking part in this. And um, I hope that, you know, more people reach out and, um, you know, do some of these exercises that you have <laughs> and, and all the work that you put into um, your social media presence is very, you know, we can definitely tell that it's definitely coming from with a lot of heart and with a lot of passion. Oh, thank so, you. Thank you. So <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you so much.